we of the Irish Volunteers and you others who are associated with us in today's task and duty are bound together and must henceforth stand together in brotherly union for the achievement of the freedom of Ireland. And we know only one definition of that freedom. It is Cone's definition. It is Mitchell's definition. It is Ross's definition. Let no man blaspheme the cause served by the dead generations of Ireland by giving it any other name and definition than their name and their definition. We stand at Ross's grave today not in sadness, but rather in exaltation of spirit that it has been given to us, and we come thus into so close a communion with this brave and splendid gale. Splendid and only cause that are served by men who are themselves splendid and holy. Jonathan Ross was splendid in the proud manhood of him, splendid in the heroic grace of him, splendid in the Gaelic strength and truth and clarity of him, and all that splendor and pride and strength was compatible with the humility and a simplicity of devotion to Ireland, to all those old and beautiful and Gaelic in Ireland. A holiness and a simplicity of patriotism of an Otto Brownie or a Michael O'Cleary. The clear, true eyes of this man, who, almost alone in his day, visioned Ireland, as we today would surely have him. Not free merely, but Gaelic as well. Not Gaelic merely, but free as well. And so in closest spiritual communion with him today than ever before, or perhaps ever again. And in close spiritual communion with those of his day, living and dead, who suffered with him in English prisons. And in a communion of spirit with our own dear comrades who suffer in English prisons today. And speaking on their behalf as well as our own. We here dedicate to Ireland our love and to English rule in Ireland our hate. This is a place of peace, a place sacred to the dead, where men should speak with all charity and all restraint. But I hold it to be a Christian thing, as our Donovan Ross held it, to hate evil, to hate untruth, and to hate oppression and by hating them, to strive to overcome them. Our foes are wise and wary and strong, but wise, wary and strong as they are, they cannot undo the miracles of God who ripens in the hearts of young men, the seed sown by the young men of former generations, just as the seed sown by the men of 65 and 67 are coming to their miraculous ripenings today. Rulers and Defenders of realms must needs be wary if they guard against these processes. For from death springs life, and from the graves of patriot men and women spring living nations. The defenders of this realm have worked well, in secret and in the open. They think that they have pacified Ireland. They think that they have intimidated half of us and purchase the other half. They think that they have foreseen everything. They think that they have provided against everything. But the fools, the fools, the fools, they have left us our Fenian dead. And while Ireland holds these graves, Ireland, unfree, shall never